The 1996 Port Arthur massacre of innocent Australians are often described as our nation's worst mass killing, perpetrated as one of the most deadly civilian mass shootings in the world to date. Australia, as a nation, was shocked to the core. The senseless and abject horror and terror of this event were felt around the nation, and yet in Australia, far worse massacres occurred in the 19th century. They have not managed to impact the national psyche. In a reassessment of the carnage on the Queensland colonial frontier, historians have identified a protracted ferocity by the native mounted police and some settlers. To hide and deny this, 19th century politicians and squatocracy and many more, especially 20th century historians, use the fabrication of the pioneering myth as the lie of peaceful settlement. Across the state and around the nation, oral history, both black and white, recall massacre stories of local Aboriginal groups. Here are some of these recollections that put paid to the lie that Australia was settled peacefully. Unfortunately, the massacres of Aboriginal people happened right the way around the continent, and in what became Queensland there were somewhere between 65,000 and 112,000 killed. Many more succumbed to introduced European diseases. That devastated many tribal groups in some cases well in advance of white settlement. In 1838, the Mile Creek Massacre occurred in what became northern New South Wales, and it was not the first or the last massacre to take place on the New South Wales frontier, but it was the first and only time that the perpetrators were held accountable and hanged. More importantly, in the long run, it heralded a major change in the attitude of the frontiersmen, the killings continued, but the whites kept quiet about it. Thus began Australia's conspiracy of silence. On the west coast of Cape York Peninsula, south of the future Aboriginal township of Kawanyama, the late Cockerbaron elder Kenny Jimmy recalled an event that occurred between the Staten and Nassau rivers on Cattle Creek around the turn of the last century. We required an old tour Normanton to come along the coast, coast area for our cattle creek and that's why the Aboriginal people area was there, they was camping out to happen um, and they come along and shot them old people in the water there while they was hunting in the water swimming, hunting for fish, cattle. All my Aboriginal people was got shot there at Cattle Creek. The river was all bloodshed and they picked them bodies up and just stack them up in the sand ridge. Till today you can still see the bone. On the other side of Cape York Peninsula, just north of Townsville, in the rainforests inland from Cardwell, the late Gurame elder, Jack Morita, recalled a mask poisoning at a place called Mumbai. One day, so my uncle came over from Kennedy Valley to visit the people here, and he had some relatives here. And as he come, and there was silence, it sounds like nobody was around. And he come a bit closer, and he looked. It's not a, not a sign of anyone move, movement of anybody. So he come a bit closer, and he can smell that big stink. Smell very strong. So he walked right up to the camp, and he seen it, the dead bodies are laying everywhere. And he believed that they was all been poisoned with the strychnine. The late Jack Morita. The late David Lawrence of the Rainforest Gurame tribe south of Tully in far north Queensland recalled the poisoning of his ancestors at Jambun on the Murray River.
the late Giramay David Lawrence talking about the Jambun poisoning on the Murray River south of Tully in far north Queensland. Over the Cardwell Range south of Cairns at Blanco Falls, Jittable Elder Dr Ernie Grant recalled the actions of some white settlers in the taking of their traditional lands. Behind me is the Blanco Falls and uh, it has a different connotation for Aboriginal people because uh, we know the horrors that happened here in the past. Everybody knew about it, that uh, William Dalecki had pushed these two women over. One was pregnant with his child from just straight back there, right on the falls. And the two women went straight over to the falls to their death. A man named Frank Collins and also Dalecki drove them over with stock whips and they fell over the side there and, and Hector's mother survived. And she survived with a limp on her leg and she, it was quite uh, discernible to see that she walked with this limp. Jittable elder Dr Ernie Grant recalling the massacres of his ancestors at Planko Falls. In 1997, the late Girame elder Jack Marita recalled to his fellow elders David Lawrence and Bessie Jerry what happened at the site of the Jiran massacre. I told Bessie uh, that uh, Willie Lee told Bessie that they shot him out till nothing, clean him all out. And some of them were visiting on that day from some other camp. They were there, they got shot too. But they, they, they kept this, uh, so many young fella, they were teenagers, and they, they kept him, they take him away, they put a, a chain around their neck and they lead him away. But the rest of it, wives and kids and everyone, babies and all. And Bessie was saying, and they, they go around with the axe, and they just, you know, uh, get the little, little, little kids and hit him on the head like a, you know, like a dog. Hit him, kill him that way, see? So anyway, when they done that, they take him all down the gully down there, and they put him all in a heap there, and they got a, and they cut a lot of wood, and they burn him up. Tell me no, no body laying around, there'd be no bone laying around. And that, uh, I don't think you'll ever find any bone here because all been burnt. And uh, it was about easy, about four or five hundred people. Big camp, big camp. The late Girame elder Jack Marita recounting a major series of massacres of his ancestors at Duran near Michael Creek, south of Tully. The late Gerbil elder Willie Messina recalling some of the episodes of killings at Jalulapa on the upper Tully River. We was clean up the house. We found a gun. Uh, and Bob said, oh, I think I'll get Mrs. Henry to get me some bullet. That's the one they shot, the, all the Murrays with. Yeah. Anyway, it was uh, 32, 40. 40. No, 44. 44, it's a big, big bullet. Mm. Mm. Anyway, one day, old Paddy come along, Paddy Robinson. Murray. Well, he was just up there living the, the neighbor's creek. Yeah. Anyway, you don't, that's the gun I shoot all of my people with. Yeah? Yeah, that's the one now. Where you shoot them? In Cairo? Hmm. So, bushfire went through. We went there after the bushfire, and we seen these bones right around, eh? Right around there. That's where the camp was, eh? Mm -hmm. Right on the Bone place. everywhere, yeah. He had to shoot them because they living in a cattle property, you see? Yeah. <coughs> the late Gerbil Elder, Willie Messina. The Spiwa massacre happened over the range from the Red Lynch Valley train track at the back of Cairns. An elderly Jabbergai remembered being present as a famished five-year-old who was salivating at the prospect of eating minya, meat, but as the pony was being prepared in its death throes, it kicked a stone that hit the young buttercup in the chest. Her mother, Minnie, took her to the river to wash and cool the injury. The newspaper ominously concluded, uh, needless to say, the banquet did not come off. For whilst down the river, Buttercup and Minnie heard gunshots and later inspected the camp and saw the bodies of their people. In terror, they fled for their lives down to the Red Lynch Valley. Bulawangi elder, Willie Brim 
travelled to the site and considered the tragedy of the 1890 Spiwa massacre and how settlers viewed the traditional lands of his ancestors. To them what was more important was this land for cattle and raising money. But to us, it was the rivers and the mountains that are full of stories and lore and they ignored all of that. There's only a few families that survived through the, the torment of history in this country here. My family was the last family to walk out of here, and that was in 1916. The ugliness of it all will, uh, will not be forgotten by family groups, but we've learned to accept the history and to move on. But we can't move on until we put our elders to rest properly. Bulawangi elder Willie Brim at Spiwa. The far north Queensland Girame Didable elder, Dr Ernie Grant, recently observed that You can't glorify the settling of Australia without glorifying the method used to the settling. My forebears were involved in a long running series of frontier wars as each district was violently subdued. The colonial Europeans and their paramilitary native police went on to pacify the next. Our ancestors fought a guerrilla war which colonists at the time readily admitted was a war on the frontier. No Australian today is responsible for what happened on our colonial frontier, but we are responsible for not acknowledging what happened. If we do not, our integrity as a nation is flawed and we are shamed as a people for perpetuating a lie. This fulsome, groundbreaking history has been uncovered in The Conspiracy of Silence, Queensland's Frontier Killing Times, published by Alan and Unwin, researched and written by Dr Timothy Bottoms.